Good day. It is January 9th, 2017. And I'm out here with my Glenwood boiler. There's, there it is. In all its glory. And I thought I'd go over the latest change I made to this. I mentioned it in my review video and hopefully this video won't be quite as long. After a, a couple days I went back and I took this blower off because I wanted to check that impeller and sure enough uh, creosote was starting to accumulate on the impeller blades again. Over here is my blower off the Eco. Now this is seven years old and if you look inside You will not see any creosote. You will see dust and a little surface rust. But that's it. There is absolutely no creosote inside this blower. And the Eco had a, a flap mechanism on the inboard side of the blower. Now, from the factory, it had this air box mounted right there. And on the inside of the, the box, if I can get the lighting and everything else correct here, there's a little flap mechanism. Well, to adjust the air, you had to loosen two thumb screws and you move this back and forth. And again, this is all out of sight, upside down, you can't see anything. Very inconvenient. In any case, there's a little flapper mechanism on the inside. Okay, so when the fan starts up, the flap opens up, lets the air in. When the fan turns off, it closes and prevents any air from moving through the blower into the air box. When I first got the unit, this blower was mounted right up against the door. And there was no flap mechanism, nothing to protect the impeller from smoke, creosote, or anything else coming back when the blower is off. So again, I took the, a cue from the Eco and I decided to add a flap mechanism ahead or in between the firebox and the impeller. So I made up this little plenum or air box, whatever you want to call it. And I'll take the fan off here in just a minute so you can see what I made. And again, since it worked so well on the Eco, these shutters right here, I just took the shutter off, took some uh, scrap sheet metal that I saved from the Eco and I made my own. And this works, it, it just works nicely. I'm not sure why they have to make things so difficult. I, I don't know. But again, when I wanna start the fire, or if I need to build a new fire, I can easily open this thing up full. There's no screws I gotta move or screws I gotta loosen or anything else. It, it just works nicely. And once the fire gets going and I wanna tone things down a little bit, I can change it to whatever setting I want. And I put a little mark right here and that seems to be a fairly sweet spot where the boiler likes to run, right about in that area there, which is about 50% open. So let me take a minute here, I'll stop it, and I'll take that fan unit off and let you see what I built. Okay, I have the top two screws removed from the blower, and I'm going to lift this off and set it down. And I'm just an old man. I date, I date everything that I build now, and... Uh, so I know when I've made it and if I have a problem later on or when somebody else comes in here at some other time, they'll know I was here. But 
this is what I made. It's a little flat mechanism that sits ahead of the blower in between the impeller and the firebox. And this is about three inches deep. So when the fan turns on, this is sucked inward and air goes into the firebox. When the fan turns off, this closes and there's no creosote or anything else that gets back into the fan. So maybe that'll help somebody else if they're having problems or issues with creosote getting back into their impeller. So thanks again for taking the time to watch my videos and have a nice day.